the Inside the Rink family, as well as the Hattrick Hockey Talk podcast, send their deepest thoughts and condolences to the Goudreau family. Forever playing hockey, Johnny and Matt Goudreau. Connor McDavid's first rear hat trick. A little bit of a different look this week on the Hattrick Hockey Talk podcast. Less hat trick, more, how do you say, penalty shot. Your truly James Mackey here to talk you through everything going on in the yard work that is hockey here in Arizona, high school, ASU, NHL, and AHL all. On this show, welcome to the Hockey Extravaganza. I didn't know if you knew you were ready for it. Now you do. It doesn't matter anyway. Welcome back to the Hattrick Hockey Talk podcast. Just quickly before we begin, be sure to use code ITR on the DraftKings Sportsbook app to get up to $200 in bonus bets. Last time, if you remember, we talked was about high school hockey. Me, Dylan Pescator, the voice of Asha, and Steve Peters, a very, very, very well-trained hockey mind took a second to talk about some teams to keep an eye out for in Asha. We talked a lot about the top dogs. We talked a lot about Nerd and Prep. We talked a lot about Pinnacle. We talked a lot about Centennial. But there's one team in particular, if you recall, that we talked about that we don't think a lot of people will be talking about this season. Dylan, yeah. anything to add? I got – actually, I got a wild card team for you that I just thought of. Um, okay. I think it's a, a team that's kind of come up short a couple of years in a row after they won in 2020, Hamilton. Hamilton Huskies. Yeah. They bring back uh, Jack Welch, who was very good last year. He made it to Team Arizona. But I'll give you I'll give you a little breaking news here. Uh, they just picked oh. up a little goalie named Dominic Selegman, um, who was a freshman. He's, he's actually his, his third school. Um, freshman or third team, I should say. He hasn't, he hasn't changed schools. But uh, freshman at, uh, at Shap. Then sophomore last year he was on Campo and now he's on Hamilton. Um, wow! And he could easily, easily challenge Max Milstein or, or whoever goalie that comes up as the best goalie in Division One. Um, yeah. And that Hamilton team, as you know, Petey, they love to score. They play yeah. seven, six, six, five games. They get a goalie and yeah. uh, they could be dangerous. So there that's a little. Wild that's breaking out. news, Dylan Pescatore. I'm telling you, this guy is all is over. Down. Word there from Dylan Pescatore and Steve Peters on the last time we talked on the Hattrick Hockey Talk podcast. Let's take a look now at the current standings for the Division I layer of Arizona High School Hockey. At the top, the Notre Dame Prep Saints. Little to no surprise there, one of the top programs in the state. What we call a natural program, necessarily meaning all their kids. It is a school-sponsored team, per words of an Asha hockey official, a team strictly run by the school. A number two a Pinnacle Pioneers team, 2-1-0. and oh. Notre Dame Prep, 2-1-1, and one, eight points on the year. Pinnacle, 2-1-0, and oh, six points on the year. Campo Verde sitting currently in third. That same 2-1-0 and oh clip, five points on the year. The Horizon Huskies, number four overall. They're sitting 1-1-1 one, one and one with five points. Brophy Broncos rounding out the top five. One in one through two games played and a total of four points. If you'll remember the last time we talked, we kind of mentioned that Brophy brought in a new head coach after the success they had had getting back into that kind of playoff push. They were a decent team last season. Don't get anything mixed up. They didn't make it very far into the playoffs, but they had one of the top goalies, as you heard Dylan mention in that clip in Max Milstein, somebody that Dylan and I often kept an eye on no matter how often uh, we covered Brophy or not. We were always willing to talk about Max Milstein and what the Milstein brothers were doing for the Brophy program. Now, he related Max Milstein to a kid by the name of Dominic, Dominic Seligman. Pardon me, Seligman, the goaltender that Hamilton picked up in the offseason. He has missed the first three weeks of the season. He's expected to be back this week. Hamilton also returning their top four point getters from last year. As head coach Peter Morse expects the same offensive production from that group, that top four in points being Jack Welch, Nick Nunez, Zach Koshal, and Caden Schaefer, all currently sitting top four. Last season, Welch 11 and 13, uh, 11 goals, 13 assists with 24 points. Nunez 14 goals, 8 assists with 22 points. Zach Koshal 7 goals, 11 assists with 18 points. And Caden Schaefer matching him on the 18 point clip, 9 goals, 9 assists to equal his 18 points this year. 
through just three games for each of these programs. Uh, for Hamilton, Caden Schaefer, two goals, one assist. Zach Koschel, zero goals, two assists. Nick Nunez, one goal, one assist. And Jack Welch as well, the same number. So Hamilton, a little bit of room to improve. Obviously, you expect the big production from your top dogs. You're currently sitting seventh at one and one, only through two games. Still a good note. You're in a great place looking forward to what the season has in store again we're only two weeks in at this point we're only two games in there's still 18 more to be played by hamilton 19 if you count the play and if they make it the head coach peter morris told dylan on the behind the bench podcast he's fully expecting that hamilton team to be a top four come the end of the year a team that totally could do it based on the fact that they do have Donovan Seligman, one of the kids that has been really, really good throughout his years in Asha. He's been a consistent producer for whatever program he's been a part of. And so far up to this point, he hasn't really given us any reason not to believe that he will do the exact same thing again this year. However, I will let you know, obviously, he has not played through the first two games of the year for Hamilton. Again, he is expected to be back this week as Hamilton uh, preps for their games this weekend. But up to this point, Dominic Seligman has not seen any time between the pipes for Hamilton. Let's move now to the sixth overall seed, the Centennial Coyotes. They lost a solid part of their core that won the title last year. A couple of notable returns for them. Their goaltender, Logan Gibbs, was big for them in that title game. Notre Dame Prep has one of the best offensive units in the entirety of the state, one of the top offensive units really in the country as well. Uh, and they were very, very potent in the title game, but Logan Gibbs kept Centennial in it. Defenseman Jacob Gabrick, still a part of that same unit that kept them in the game against those uh, Notre Dame Prep Saints. They were very, very potent again offensively, and Gabrick was one of the guys that was relied on on the back end by head coach Caleb Drinkhouse, somebody he knew could be a big stopper if needed. They lose Ryan McCaw, who played defense. They lose Cade Pereja, who produced as a forward. However, they do return Jackson Steele. He has yet to see any time on the ice with the Centennial Coyotes. Unfortunately, the one downside of high school hockey in Arizona is travel hockey always comes first, and that being that whenever kids have travel weekends, the same reason, uh, the same weekend, pardon me, that they have high school games, they'll nine times out of 10 be on that travel plane or that travel bus and then try to make it back in time. If they don't, no big deal. Nobody's really going to fret about it. Just something that would be nice for a couple programs to get those kids back whenever they can. Then Mark Melissa made the roster last year for Division One in Centennial. He was a good middle-of-the-road player for them last year, somebody they can definitely turn to now. Again, youth is the name of the game for these Centennial Coyotes. They don't have a lot of the same people they had last year. That's the biggest thing. They graduated most of that roster, so now they have to rely on some of these guys who were younger last year to kind of step up into those roles of being – uh, an offensive threat throughout the year and being someone that their their group can rely on for leadership and for point getting. Now, we take a look at my third honorable mention. I threw him on this list. Mountain Ridge currently 1-0-0, only playing one game on the year. I had a chance to talk with head coach Ed Georgievich. Obviously, he expressed great, great, great concern, uh, great, sorry, great hope for his program as the year continues. Again, only playing one game. He did also have some concerns about the growth of the game in Arizona. Obviously, a very unprecedented time for everybody, but head coach Ed Georgievich did lead his Division Two and Division Three groups to titles last year. A lot of those kids kind of move up. They returned some kids from club who, you know, took a couple years off to focus on club hockey. Very excited for what future has for his team is Ed Georgievich, and I have to admit, I'm also very excited to see what the Mountain Ridge Mountain Lions can do. We take a look now at the next level of hockey in Arizona. We flip to the NCHC and the NCAA, Arizona State University Sun Devils. This video posted the biggest news as of recent for the program is the announcement of their captain sees. So the first guy that uh, will announce is Ty Jackson. <laughs> Leader. 
So we'll get to the breakdown of the captain sees. However, we will start at the top, as you saw at the front of the room there, that a man by the name of Greg Powers, who has been in control of this program since they made their Division One debut, his 16th season on the Sun Devil coaching staff, ninth of uh, ninth as head coach of Arizona State's D1 program. 2019 and 2020 Spencer Penrose Award finalist for the top coach in all of Division One, and a 2018 and 2019 Frank Cush Sun Devil Coach of the Year Award winner. 2023 inductee to the Arizona or the American Collegiate Hockey Association Hall of Fame for his time spent um, as a coach, and then a 2009 ASU uh, American Collegiate Hockey Association Hall of Famer as a player. Uh, in his time as a goaltender of the ACHA program, a three-time All-American, three national championship qualifications in four years, and he won team MVP in 1996, 97, 1997, and 98. Greg Powers, as I mentioned, is a guy that they've had in control of their program uh, for as long as they've been a Division One program. He was a huge proprietor of moving them up from the ACHA level, which is club hockey, if you're unfamiliar, into the NCAA Division One level. So, Greg Powers, a huge name around the Arizona Sun Devil or Arizona State, my apologies, Sun Devil Hockey Canada. And he's somebody that a lot of people have really had a chance to get to know and love. Uh, he's been he's been great. Signed a five-year contract extension through 2026, 2027 in July of 2022. He was a 2013-2014 ECHA Division I national title winner as a head coach. Let's take a look now at last season's stat leaders. Uh, Lucas Sillinger, part of that captaincy group, led in two categories, both points and assists. He finished with 48 points, 37 of which are stemming from assists. New captain Ethan Schmaggy finished as team leader in block shots with 58. Uh, we'll look at now the other returners here. Gibson Homer finished as a leader in save percentage with a point nine three one, And Lucas Sillinger led the team in power play points. With 30, uh, 30 overall, three goals, 27 assists. They lost a couple key names here. Their goals leader last year, Matthew Copperud, graduated. He had 23 goals, 13 assists for 36 total points. Their faceoff winner, Brian Chambers, 384 for three, uh, 70, 384 attempts, 371 wins. And their power play goal leader, Matt Copperud, again, leaves in the graduation uh the graduation requirement comes to get Matt Copperwood, so he graduates, moves on. They lose a couple guys that could be uh, that could be hard to replace. Winning faceoffs is hard to do. Not a lot of guys can do it at the NCAA level. It'll be interesting to see how they do that this year. We take a look now at their goals against average leader TJ Semptonfelter, who left for North Dakota in the transfer portal. So now the lying of the goaltending of longs to Gibson Homer. It'll be interesting to see how he manages that this year. We'll take a look now at the Sun Devil upcoming schedule. Their first year in the NCHC starts off with a couple out-of-division games against the Air Force uh, Academy, uh, both in Colorado on October 4th and 5th. The Sun Devils' first year in the NCHC kicks off with two games at Air Force out of conference on October 4th and 5th before they return home to host the Michigan Wolverines, a team that's been very confidently top of the Big Ten for the past couple of years, a national title competitor, if you will. Uh, they then host, uh, they then go on the road for three straight series leading into conference play. Providence, October 18th and 19th. Northern Michigan, October 25th and 26th. And then the start of their conference play schedule November 8th and 9th against Colorado College. We'll take a second now to take a look at the Sun Devils record versus some of these teams that they'll be facing now in the NCHC. Just a reminder this year, they are projected by the media for the NCHC to finish eighth with a total of 80 points. That's eight out of nine. Their stat lines against some of the teams that they'll be playing this year in eight games against Denver, they've only managed to pull out one victory seven losses. North Dakota won the game that they played on October 29th, 2022 at the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. That a neutral site game at T-Mobile Arena. One of 12 ASU wins versus ranked opponents since 
Lucas Sillinger, a returner for the Sun Devil squad with a goal in that game. Matthew Copperud, one of the uh, levers in the graduation uh, the graduation requirement that game as well for the Sun Devils. Then against Colorado College, uh, they've played six games, five wins, one loss. Against o- o- Omaha, only one game that last year's Sun Devil Classic. That was a win for the Devils. Against University of Minnesota Duluth, two games played, both losses. Uni- University of Minnesota Duluth, if you're unfamiliar, one of the top teams in the country perennially. One, one team that everybody knows to keep an eye out for, somebody that can be uh, very potent when it comes to making a push for the playoffs. In Miami, they've split two games in total, one in one. Not included in that count. I only stemmed back to 2021, so I kind of went common area the last four years. Uh, Western Michigan and St. Cloud State, both as well, part of the NCHC this year. The complaints about schedule toughness for the Sun Devils uh, are, are going to be very few and far between uh, following this year. Again, uh, that just to look at really what they're up for when it comes to their first, what is that, five, six series of the year. But again, you kind of get down to some of the brass tacks of it. After they start their conference play, they start again on the road, then they come home to play Omaha for a series, take the road back to Denver, then they're home to face Minnesota Duluth. Wrap up the calendar year with two exhibition games against the University National uh, United States National Team Development Program. Then they head into the Desert Hockey Classic playing host once again. This time, teams included in that, Cornell, University of Massachusetts, Robert Morris. Then you look ahead back into their conference play schedule that pick up with North Dakota at Mullet Arena before heading on the road to St. Cloud State. Play host to Colorado College for the second time this year. They'll face them before heading out to Miami for two games for the first meeting against the Miami, Ohio Redhawks. Then they'll play host to Denver, hit the road again to Minnesota Duluth, then play host to Western Michigan. So, their schedule, nothing easy for the Sun Devils this season. Games against North Dakota, uh, St. Cloud State, and really entirely Denver are going to be some of their biggest tune-ups they have before they get down to the March 14th and 15th quarterfinals uh, in the NCHC Frozen Faceoff as well the following weekend. So not a lot of easy hockey to be played by the Devils this year. However, they do look to a captain group that is quite experienced to lead them through it. We'll take a look now at some of the names on that list, including the alternates. Ty Jackson, a graduate student, played his freshman and sophomore years at Northeastern, so he's used to high-caliber hockey. Northeastern, one of the good programs in college hockey. His junior year uh, put up a couple points in games versus St. Thomas. His senior year, four assists in the final three games after missing 15 due to injury. Had a four-point weekend against Denver in a 1-1 split series. One goal, three assists, four points overall there. We turned out a tie. Turtleneck Murchison, as head coach Greg Powers called him, a senior, got drafted by the Flyers in 2021. Freshman year, played all 35 games for the Devils. Sophomore year, put up 50 blocks for the second year consecutively. He did the same in his first year with the Devils. His junior year, he put up 62 penalties in minutes, 13th in the NCAA. That a relationship he vowed, he vowed, very, 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 very seriously to try and get away from this year in a series of tweets that he took over the NCHC account. And some Sun Devil fans got to ask him. He strictly said to the question was, what do you have to say for your relationship to the penalty box last year? He simply just replied, I'm trying my best to distance myself from that relationship this year. We then look at Benji Eckerly, a grad student, only uh, has played all four of his collegiate years of hockey at Arizona State. Four goals, five assists, nine points in his freshman year. Three goals, four assists, seven points in his sophomore year. Finished his junior year with a plus four rating in his senior year. Five goals, 15 assists, totaling 20 points in a plus eight rating. We now look to the brother of Columbus Blue Jackets draftee, Cole Sillinger, Lucas Sillinger, the final alternate captain on this list, a grad student. Played his freshman and sophomore years at Bemidji State. Arizona State, one of those programs that lands a lot of kids from the transfer portal and even from the WHL, which we'll talk about after we're done with this. His senior year finished as a Hobie Baker nominee, set the program record again for 48 points, 11 goals, 37 assists to get to that mark. Scored the program's first uh, first natural hat trick last season as well. And he was an assistant captain with now Captain Ethan Schmaggy. Schmaggy has played all four of uh, all three of his 
previous years with the Arizona State Sun Devils. Forgive me, 25 games this freshman year, totaling five points, one goal, four assists. 39 games this sophomore year, one goal, 10 assists, 11 points total, 62 shots on goal last season. Led the team in block shots with 58. Three goals, four assists, totaling seven points, and a plus six rating, his career best up to this point. So a guy that they rely on in the blue line heavily, not an offensive producer, but somebody they know they have in the back that can stop shots whenever needed. A very important marker for this team this year, heading into a little bit tougher consistently play uh, in a, a new conference. Now we'll look at the WHL signing they pulled out. Braxton Whitehead of the Regina Pats, if you remember, Regina Pats is where last year's number one overall pick played Connor Bedard in his time with the Pats. Whitehead has accrued 95 points in 196 games, 38 goals, 57 assists total. Just before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor of the network ESPN plus. If you like what you see and you want to support the show, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Be sure to visit inside the rink.com slash ESPN or use a QR code on your screen to support our network. I personally love and use ESPN Plus for all my out-of-market hockey games. Being a Chicago Blackhawks fan living in Arizona, not really many chances for me to watch them on cable TV. So ESPN Plus comes in clutch, as well as when my Arizona State Sun Devils are playing on the road, an opportunity for me to watch their games uh, at places like Texas Tech this upcoming weekend, places like Texas State last weekend, even a new bundle Offer for ESPN and Disney fans alike with live TV included on Hulu with ads that for $14.99 a month or ESPN Plus for $10.99 a month. Again, be sure to visit insidetherink.com slash ESPN or scan the QR code on your screen now to support our show. So let's talk about it. The elephant in the room, now the unfortunate departure of the Arizona Coyotes into the Utah Hockey Club. Ryan Smith, an owner that is doing everything he can to keep that team there, make everybody happy. A couple big contract signings in the last couple months. Uh, Barrett Hayton gets a two-year extension. Tisha Ginla, their number sixth overall pick in the 2024 draft, signs his entry-level contract on July 11th. Cole Bodoin, uh, Bodoin, pardon me, their 24th overall pick in that draft, signs his entry level contract just 11 days later. And Dylan Gunther, recently the newest addition to that list, signing his eight year extension on the 19th of September. So big moves there by Ryan Smith and the Smith Entertainment Group to keep Utah fans happy. They have a bright future ahead of them. If there's anything I learned from covering the team for four years, it's that those guys want to win hockey games. That's the simplest way I can put it. Everybody on that squad, everybody that plays for that team wants to win hockey games. Period. Point blank. End of story. They had a good thing going last year. They kind of hit a bumpy patch in the road when it came to the all-star break. Again, it was very hard for them to kind of recover from that after the year had kind of started to get back up to level. They started to get a couple more wins under their belt. Not really many chances for them to do a lot in terms of making the playoffs after a certain point. You hit a bad losing streak, 15, I believe it was 16 games at one point after the All-Star break. Very hard for them to get into that position. But now Utah and Ryan Smith inherit a contending team. That's the biggest thing I want to make sure I mention. Utah inherits a contending team. An owner who is competent, no offense to the Morello clan, who am I kidding? An owner who is competent, an owner who wants to win hockey games, an owner who's doing all he can to help this team win hockey games. For Pete's sake, the guy purchased 111 acres of land on August 1st for a practice facility. It took Alex Morello four years to find a new home for the Devils or for the Coyotes. After their last year at Gila River, their first two at Mullet Arena were wonderful successes. A 4,600-seat sellout every night. One of the best atmospheres in the league. Multiple reports from other teams of their players saying this is the best ice in the league. It was a very, 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 very successful experiment for the league. And then Alex Morello decided he wanted, or he had to end it, ultimately, was the biggest thing. The NHL kind of got to the point where they're like, hey, Time to get out of Mullet Arena. Morello said, you're right. I totally understand. They tried once, failed to market properly. There were lies told about how much money they were spending on that. Uh, and it just did not end well for the Morello clan at, clan at that point. Then they got to the point where it was sink or swim. 
sell the team or get the land auction for this year. And unfortunately, the land department said, hey, we don't have the right permits. You have not filled out any of the correct paperwork. We have to postpone that auction. And unfortunately, that was the final nail in the coffin for Alex Morello as the owner of the Arizona Coyotes. He does still currently own the Tucson Roadrunners. I will just say that. He currently owns the Tucson Roadrunners, and there have been reports that after their three-year lease is up down in Tucson, the last three years of that lease they signed in Tucson, he's rumored to move them to Reno, Nevada. He's rumored to strip a community that rallies around their hockey team to move them to Reno, Nevada. I can't say that I'm shocked. I really can't. However, I bring up ownership, and I started on that little soapbox. I apologize because it was announced the other day that the Smith Entertainment Group would be going ahead and doing this for fans. Absolutely wonderful. Something that I fully and I, I totally support it. I love this idea. I think a streaming service for your team to play games, especially one that's on the Scripps Network, is a wonderful thing for the NHL. I think it's great to grow the game. I think it's perfect. You see at the top there and you see the far left, the SEG Plus Network. That is both the Jazz and the Utah Hockey Club, whereas uh, at the bottom you see the Utah Hockey Club plus UT, Utah HC Plus starting on that far right with a $5 single game charge, no subscription required, a good price for a single game. Then you move on to level two, the $14.99 per month level, live Utah hockey games throughout the season, replays, all casts, and more. Then you shift over to the Utah HC Plus $69.99 annual subscription, 75 plus live Utah Hockey Club games, all monthly content benefits, as well as two single goal view tickets to a Utah Hockey Club game. I have no words. Ryan Smith has owned this team for less than six months. Keep that in mind. Ryan Smith has owned this team for less than six months. And in that time, he's bought land for a practice facility. He bought as much land for a practice facility as Alex Morello was trying to buy for an entire entertainment district. Ryan Smith in six months has purchased an NHL team, moved them successfully, gotten their home ready for their first game in uh, a couple of days in the preseason and has also purchased land to build them a practice facility for the future, a state-of-the-art practice facility for the future. So what took Alex Morello so long to figure it out? It's the only question I have, really. I There's nothing else I can, I can think to ask other than what the actual hell took Alex Morello so long to get that figured out. At what point did it take why I just I'm 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 dumbfounded. I'm lost at that that stat. That in six months, Ryan Smith has relocated an NHL franchise to a new home, started anew, started an a, a released new jerseys that in my opinion look pretty cool. They're not the Kachina, don't get me wrong. They look cool. They started a vote for a team name. It seems like they've kind of consensus down to one in particular. I'm supposing it's the Yeti. I'm not a thousand percent sure. Don't quote me on that. And he's rallied an entire community around the hockey team with a bright future, arguably the brightest future in the league. So what took Alex Morello so long to figure that out? It's a great question. I don't have the answer. I really wish I did. I don't have that answer. What I do want to take a second to look at, though, is the proposal for the league to relocate or expand back to Arizona. This is a poll issued by The Athletic saying 53.1% of NHL players said that Arizona should get the next crack at an expansion franchise. If you count in the both, that is a total of 69. 7, 68.7 respondents said both should get an opportunity to own one. Sorry, 15.6% said both Arizona and Atlanta should be next for expansion. But overall, 53.1% said Arizona should be the next expansion city for the NHL. 
This is a good note by P. Brown Hockey, formerly with the Hockey Writers, a good colleague of mine through my time covering the Coyotes for four years. Patrick Brown has been somebody that I have looked up to. He moved from the Hockey Writers on to working with the Arizona Coyotes, and now he's out of a job because of Alex Morello's inability to own a hockey team. Interesting. Patrick Brown, if you're watching this, I've told you this in private, but I'll say it in person. I'll say it in public. The growth you've exhibited through this business has been tremendous, and I'm very proud of the things you have done. And I hope for nothing but the absolute best when it comes to finding a job this upcoming season. With that being said, we're so very close to this new new experiment in the NHL. A new market, another NBA building that's ill-fit to host a hockey team. It's the same thing that happened here forever ago in the American Airlines Center, now the Footprint Arena. What will come of it, we may never know. What will come of it actually will tell itself in a couple weeks when the season starts. Utah begins their preseason run against the St. Louis Blues on September 22nd. That this upcoming Sunday. Then they wait until October 8th to start their regular season against Chicago, a nationally televised game on the ESPN networks. Tucson, their AHL affiliate, starts their regular season three day, two and three days later against the Colorado Eagles with a road trip, two games back-to-back before returning home on the 19th and 20th for their home opener against the Texas Stars. 31 minutes and 20 seconds. We've covered everything Arizona hockey. We've covered Utah hockey. And now I bid you adieu until the next time we have this wonderful conversation. For everybody a part of the Inside the Rink podcast network, our thoughts and prayers do go out to the Goodrell family. I will say my jaw dropped when I read that news. And the storylines that have come of it since have only made it worse. Into the gentleman who caused the pain to this family. May hell show no mercy on your soul. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening to episode, I'm not even sure, of the Hadrick Hockey Talk podcast, now a part of the Inside the Rink Podcast Network. We will talk to you next time. Be sure to use code ITR on the DraftKings Sportsbook app for up to $200 in bonus bets. And be sure to visit InsideTheRink.com forward slash ESPN to support the show. Sign up for ESPN Plus heading into the upcoming season with the NHL being on ESPN Plus, as well as every game you could ever want to watch of anything college related. See you next time.